Good morning and welcome to the January 14th board meeting of the Pinellas County School Board. And um, I will now call it to order and thank you for being here. Um, we'll start this morning with an invocation from Pastor Becky Robbins Peniman from the Episcopal Church of Good Shepherd in uh, Dunedin. <coughs> Following that, we will have the Pledge of Allegiance and the National Anthem, which will be sung by the Dixie Hollands High School Chamber Ensemble, led by Melissa Life. Would you please stand? Good morning. Good morning. Let us pray. Life-giving Lord, the decorations are down, the holidays are fading into memory, and most of our resolutions are already broken. Yet today we renew our prayers for peace, not a peace that comes only when all around us is calm, but the peace of a heart that is calm in the midst of frustration, chaos, and stress. And we are grateful for leaders who exemplify this peace. We renew our prayers for hope, not the hope of a merely wished-for future, but the hope that comes from trusting in both your grace and in the inherent goodness of humanity. Choosing to act boldly for the sake of the future of public agent in our education in our community. Giving thanks especially for young adults who commit to the rights and responsibilities of being positive, engaged contributors to society. We renew our prayers for love not merely warm, fuzzy sentiments of affection, as nice as those are, but the strength of will to do what is best for the other, even if it costs us dearly, and giving thanks especially for those who make time to serve as mentors for our precious children. Gracious God, we ask your blessing on the members of the Pinellas County School Board and its staff, on school administrators, teachers, and support personnel, that they may know and live all year long, the peace, hope, and love you give as gifts all year long. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose bright stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our plan was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wear? So good morning. My name is Melissa Life and I am the choir teacher at Dixie M. Hollins High School. We are so thankful to be here and I am thankful to be in Pinellas County Schools as this is my first year teaching in the state of Florida. So thanks for having me and I just want to give just a tiny little plug. These students are amazing. They ad quickly adapted to me really quick and have just been learning nonstop. And so I'm just really proud of them. And so I told them I would make that public. So I'm proud of you. And so our next song will be Wade in the Water. Okay, ready? 
doing with the arts in Pinellas County. Nice job. Thank you very much. And thank you, Pastor um, Robinson uh, Peniman, for bringing the invocation. We appreciate it. All right. We will now move on to a moment of excitement with our video. Uh, every year, we partner with the Education Foundation to honor our teachers and select the Pinellas County Teacher of the Year. In this video, you will meet the top 10 nominees as they learn that they're the finalists for this prestigious award. We will recognize all the nominees and find out who is the winner at our Evening of Excellence at the Mahaffey Theater on Wednesday, January 29th. Let me say that again, Wednesday, January 29th. The public is welcome. Please join us as we celebrate our educators and good luck to all of the finalists. <coughs> We have a really important announcement. Could Mrs. G Ms. Gwen please step up? Our teacher, your teacher, Ms. Gwen, is a top 10 Teacher of the Year finalist. All right. This is just absolutely incredible. I've been an educator for 42 years now. <laughs> so I have spent a lot of time in the classroom and I've loved every single minute of it. So this is just icing on the cake. Congratulations, Ms. Carter. You are the top 10 finalist for the Pinas County Schools Teacher of the Year. How do you feel? I am excited and surprised. <laughs> I'm overwhelmed. I'm very honored. Um, I love what I do, and this just really bring. I, I, I'm speechless, really. <laughs> and so this is a great honor to me to be recognized as um, for what I what I work so hard for. Mr. Spencer has been nominated as a top ten finalist for Pinellas County Teacher of the Year. <laughs> Thank you. I'm excited to be here, um, part of such a really supportive performing arts community, so it's really great um, to see my supervisor here and my family here. 
I think what's really cool is sort of watching them grow and develop over time. I think that middle school is sort of a tough transition and music is really something that we can use to sort of bridge that gap from elementary to middle, middle to high. So it's really cool to just watch the kids develop over time. I have some really, really exciting news to share with you. Your teacher, Mrs. Kime, has been selected as one of the top 10 finalists for Pinellas County Schools Teacher of the Year. Hi, Sam, I'm so happy for you. Thank you so much, I'm so excited. I'm actually speechless, which doesn't happen very often. <laughs> I am completely over the moon and I'm so surprised. And, and I was like, what are all these people coming in here for? So I'm very grateful. They mean everything. I love my kids very, very much. And I have 180 some of them every day. And I just, they make my life just better. We have an incredible announcement. Mr. Silva is one of Pinellas County Schools' top 10 teachers of the year. We brought a few friends with us. I'm shocked. I did not expect this at all, so it's a really cool feeling. Oh my gosh, the world, they're like my kids. I have such high expectations for them, and I push them to get there. And I don't know. I just love them. Hi, Miss Reed. I'm happy to let you know that you are one of the top 10 finalists for Teacher of the Year for Pinellas County. How do you feel? This is awesome. I mean, I love what I do. I just love everything about teaching. So to be able to do receive this honor for doing what I love to do, I am truly, truly honored. Because these students mean everything to me. And to be rewarded for what I love to do, I couldn't ask for anything more. Our fifth graders at Ponce de Leon and I have an announcement to make. Congratulations, you are officially a top 10 finalist for Teacher of the Year for Pinellas County Schools. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you to my friends who nominated me and thank you to all my little friends for being awesome and why I come to school every day. So we are pleased to announce Miss Mills is not only Bay Points Teacher of the Year, but she is one of the finalists for Pinellas County School. So can we get a congratulations? Whoa, I'm really surprised, but it's awesome. Thank you guys. It's all because of you guys. Hey, I have a big announcement today. Out of 130 schools in Pinellas County, our district picked Mr. Martinez as one of our top 10 finalists for Teacher of the Year. Let's give Mr. Martinez a big round of applause. What are your thoughts about this, huh? The fact that the district has recognized um, my talents and leadership. I'm very appreciative of the opportunities that the performing arts community has given me and my colleagues here at Davis. Good morning, fifth grade. Mr. Black's class, right? I have really, really exciting news. Miss Connolly, the world's best art teacher, has been named as a top 10 finalist for Outstanding Teacher of the Year in Pinellas County. It is a big deal. Let's give her a huge round of applause. Woo! I appreciate it so much. And this school has such fantastic teachers. So to be able to represent them and represent all these kids that you see here means a lot to me. So thank you. And that's just a little sample of the excitement that will uh, be happening again on January 29th at the Mahaffey Theater. Tickets are on sale through the Education Foundation. So please, if you're able, mark your calendar and come join us. It'll be a wonderful evening. We're going to move on now to um, a, a recognition of um, representatives from organizations. And we're going to have Isabella Mascarenas um, identify and introduce them to us, please. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Dr. Grego and staff. It is my pleasure to introduce the following representatives of community and professional organizations. With the Pinellas Classroom Teachers Association, PCTA, Mike Gandolfo, President. Mm -hmm. Representing SEIU and the Florida Public Services Union, Talmadge Andrews. Mm -hmm. From the Independent Citizens Referendum Oversight Committee, Reagan Miller. 
From Pinellas Arts for a Complete Education Coalition, Maria Cantones. From the League of Women Voters, Nikki Fleming, director, and also Julia Sharp. Ms. Sharp is also here representing Sanderlin's PTSA. Today, we will have a presentation from the Student Rights and Responsibility Committee. Please welcome from Dixie Hollins High School, Alex Jenkins, Autumn Johnson, and Haley Vetter. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, I'm Alex Jenkins. I'm the senior class president at Dixie Hollins High School. Hi, I'm Autumn. I'm the student council president. And hi, I'm Haley Vetter. I'm the NHS president. As students of Dixie Hollins High School, we take great pride in our programs. Our Cambridge program um, is continuously expanding and improving. For example, we are introducing a new ACE course, ACE Media Studies, starting this semester. And what's unique about our school is um, students are allowed to be in multiple programs, which leads to more diverse students. Our Academy of Entertainment Arts program is also looking towards the future with our portfolio class, which allows students to focus on skills that will help them get accepted into colleges and be more successful in their future entertainment careers. Um, the film department founded the student-run film society and will be making everything from no vaping PSAs to feature films. In regards to awards, last year gaming won two gold keys and two silver keys in Scholastics. Our music program won the FMEA awards for five songs. Band has had five students get into all county this year and culinary has had multiple teams going to Skills USA and Pro Start. And recently our JROTC hosted the Barbara Pinek Trail Meet where out of 10 events, we placed first and sixth and took home the overall trophy. Um, lastly, um, upcoming, we have the uh, Academy holding its annual showcase known as The Show, which is a multimedia concert um, created by the students. And lastly, our theater department will be hosting the musical Chicago as our spring musical. Thank you. With this in mind, I'd like to shed some light on the enhancements of our school. The first is our coffee cart that's open before school during lunch and roams the halls during first block. It's improved classroom tidiness and um, upped classroom productivity. Another improvement is our student center, which we're really happy about. The center is going to be opening this semester as a place for students to mingle and a change in scenery for our teachers. Our avid to school ratio is reflects the diverse amount of students that attend Holland High School. Last year's graduation rate was a record breaking 94% and the class of 2020. Uh, so we plan to break that with 95 this coming May. This school, this year we've implemented a food pantry and a clothing closet to help both our community and our students. We feel that when you look good, you feel good and your performance increases. And lastly, we received a grant from John Hopkins Hospital and through this partnership, our health club was born. Dixie Helens has really proved itself through its accomplishments, but there are still some changes that could be made to make our school even better than it already is. For as you have heard, we have an active student body with busy lives. Yet for all of their economic school and family stress, we only have a part-time psychologist. That one person cannot help the entirety of our students needing mental health assistance a mere two days a week. The same goes for our school nurse. She is only on campus part-time and there isn't, and isn't there for the students who have an emergency and for the students who need medicine daily. This can put our students at a disadvantage mentally and physically especially the students who cannot get medical assistance outside of school. We ask that you consider hiring a full-time psychologist and a full-time nurse that would be able to make sure the students are healthy enough to work to their fullest. Also, we could use new water fountains. The current ones are old, dilapidated, and a bit unsanitary. <laughs> By adding new water fountains, we would encourage the use of reusable water bottles and give students access to clean water to allow them to stay hydrated. This is especially important for our student athletes who stay after school and don't and often don't get to drink, especially if it's they have to get it from a machine. Finally, we would like to mention how we hope to one day add a washer and dryer to allow students who need to launder their clothes and are not able to do it at home. It is part of, a, of an initiative at our school to give students the support they need so they don't have to worry about having their needs met 
and can better focus on their education and other aspects of their lives. Thank you for hearing and having us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. This is good. Nice job. Ms. Flowers? Uh, good morning. Um, everybody here knows that Dixie is close to my heart because I graduated from Dixie, so go Rebels. Um, but um, I purchased a washer and dryer for Fairmont Park Elementary for the very same reason, so I will purchase a washer and dryer for Dixie Hollins High School. I'll get with your principal. And we'll oh get gosh, it out there. Thank uh, you. Mr. Thank Clint's used to me okay. now. So if you could have staff maybe check to see about hookups and connections. And once he lets me know everything is good, I'll have that wash and dryer delivered. Thank, thank you so thank much. You You're so welcome. Much. You're very welcome. Very welcome. Thank you for being here. We appreciate it. And I believe your Students' Rights and Responsibilities uh, Coordinator, Ms. Fernandez, has joined you today. Yes. Is she yes. here? There you go. Thank you for bringing them. Of course. Nice. Yep. Nice job. And thank you for being here. My now get back to class. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Dudley. Uh, I want you to know that um, uh, I'm trying to think how many years ago I interned at Dixie Hollins, started my teaching career there. <laughs> and uh, Ms. Fernandez, I know very, very well. Uh, she's Graduated in high, Northeast High School and a good friend of my daughter's and um, great family. And uh, it's really good seeing you. And I know you didn't include this in your remarks, but uh, Dixie Holland's uh, last Friday, the um, uh, the St. Petersburg City Championship Wrestling Tournament was held at Northeast and Dixie won it again. They're we're, I think we're just going to give them the trophy and just tell them to keep it. They, <laughs> they won it. That was the 25th um, anniversary of that tournament, which I started. I can't believe it's been, it was 25 years ago. And uh, Dixie is, well, I'm just shooting off the top of my head, probably 15 years. I won it. I'm getting tired of it. <laughs> no. no, congratulations, and uh, it's a it's a really good school. Uh, I enjoyed my time there, and it's good seeing you, Abby. All right, very good. Anyone else? Okay, good. Thank you. We appreciate it. And um, now that we've heard your request, I'm sure that they'll be discussed. So thank you for bringing them forward. And while we're doing that, I want to thank all the community representatives and organization representatives that are also here today. Thank you. All righty. Uh, we'll move to the special order. We have a presentation of a proclamation recognizing National Mentoring Month of January. Dr. Grego? Yes. Oh, yeah. I, I'm trying to move things along a little faster. Okay. Thank you. I did jump over all of that. All right. Uh, are there any amendments to the agenda? There are no Dr. amendments Gregan? to the agenda. Okay. And board members, is there anyone that wants to pull a consent agenda item? Okay, seeing none, do we have a motion to adopt the agenda as presented? Move to approve the agenda as presented. We have a second? All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say no, and it passes unanimously. Thank you, and uh, thank you. See, even though your chair was vacant, you're paying attention. <laughs> thank you. That's, that's right, that's right. Okay, now we're down to the special order agenda. So we'll have, again, the presentation of the proclamation recognizing National Mentoring Month of January. Dr. Grego? Yes, Madam Chair and school board members, this is always a, a great recognition, as, as all of our recognitions are, but this is the National Mentoring Month. And I want to say and call upon on Dr. Brim, who's already at the microphone, I wanted to say a few things as she was walking up, so let me do say that. Um, our mentoring... Okay. <laughs> I want to just suggest that when you look at our mentoring program over the last several years, what one of the things that I think is so admirable about it is that Dr. Brim has created a flexible approach <laughs> to it. it. It's everything from lunch pals to um, the take stock in children mentor uh, program, <clears throat> all the way to um, girlfriends and five thousand role mm -hmm. models. It's it's, a, it's almost as if it's something for everybody, and it's mm -hmm. not a one size fits all. I believe that's one of the, the key components of why our mentoring program is not only in sheer numbers, but is so effective to students. 
remember our overall goal when we started this work was to have a caring adult for every mm -hmm. student who needed an adult um, to, to listen to, to um, work with, to mentor. And so I, I just want to say thank you, Dr. Brim, and, and really to this board for supporting the, not only the programs, but the training that takes that comes mm -hmm. along. So even though we recognize it as a month, but I, I can say to you, mentoring is so important for us all year round. So thank you, Dr. Brim. Okay, good morning, good morning. Uh, Madam Chair, board members, Dr. Greco and staff. We are excited about celebrating um, January as our National Mentoring Month. We honor our parents, families, teachers, coaches, and mentors who dedicate their time to our Pinellas County School students. Thus far this year, we've trained and placed over 650 mentors at um, our schools. We've held um, and conducted over 40 mentor trainings. Our Lunch Pal program has 1,400 students in 114 schools. And more recently, our partnership with Raymond James, Ron Dino was honored in Washington, D.C. for our mentoring program. So we're proud of um, his, his continued work. Um, Pinellas County Schools mentoring program include general mentors, tutors, lunch pals, take stock in children, as Dr. Greco said, 5,000 role model, um, girlfriend, St. Pete Promas, big brothers and sisters in our peer mentoring program. This year, under the leadership of Mrs. Canning, in our 21st century program in some of our South County schools, she has launched a mentoring program as well. She has partnered with the men of yesterday to actually come into the programs in the after school and actually work with our African-American male elementary student. So I'm proud to say that he's here to speak briefly about the program, about his experience as a mentor, because this entire organization has mentored over hundreds of students in our district. But I also want to thank um, the board members and Dr. Greco for their support for our continued program and Mrs. Robert, who does a phenomenal job overseeing our volunteers and mentoring. So at this time, I want to bring up Mr. Jack Fletcher. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Renee. Hey. <laughs> um, my name is Jack Fletcher, and I am a, um, I'm a retired firefighter for the city of St. Petersburg. Upon retirement, I needed something to do, and a good friend of mine, Jim Oliver, who was an educator in this system for well over 30 years, said, I need some help at Melrose. The summer before, we had started a group of guys who graduated from Gibbs, most of us, and we wanted to give back to the community. We started an organization called Men of Yesterday, Today, and the Future. Interesting name, purpose well driven. When we started mentoring, we found a need that was not being met in our system. Care, simply care. We have found that giving back, showing children that they are important and valued has strengthened them. We, we've seen actual changes. We partnered with, uh, at Melrose with uh, then principal Nikita Reed and that program blossomed so much and the guys bought into it so much that now we're in over 14 South County schools, two private schools. We're at 5,000 role models. We're at uh, the um, Checkmates Chess Club at John Hopkins, Take Stock in Children, uh, and with the lovely connection with Deborah Caning, the 21st Century I Class. We have fallen in love with this program. We have about, we, I know the programs that I'm involved in are at Campbell Park and at Fairmont Park. 
And I can truthfully say, we have seen market changes in the disposition and the attitudes of the children that we have been mentoring. I guess my plea to you would be to advance this program, strengthen it, because it works. Caring, concern, helps. It's the other, it's the other leg of the educational piece that I think is missing. Technology has almost removed the human touch. And that we need to get back to. The men in our organization are committed, and we think that there are other people out there who would take advantage of this opportunity if it were provided. I would ask you, I guess my plea to you would be to advance this program if possible. I thank you for listening. I thank you for caring. I consider all of us trustees of the future, and it's our responsibility to help everyone succeed. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I don't think we could say it any better than what was just said. And we so appreciate what you're doing. The words <laughs> thank you aren't, aren't enough. We really appreciate everything that you've done and all of the people that you have brought in. Thank you. Right. It's a proclamation. And yes, we have the proclamation now, and Ms. Long is going to read it. Are you done? No, oh, I'm done. Thank oh. you. Yeah. <laughs> she is now. I said you're reading the proclamation. <laughs> National Mentoring Month, whereas the goals of National Mentoring Month are to raise awareness of the value of mentoring, recruit individuals to mentor, and encourage organizations to engage and integrate quality mentoring into their efforts. And whereas a mentor is a caring person who is consistently present and who devotes time to a young person to help them discover their personal strengths and achieve their full potential through a structured, trusting relationship. And whereas quality mentoring encourages positive choices, promotes self-esteem, supports academic achievement, and introduces young people to new ideas. And whereas mentoring programs have also been effective and com in combating school violence and discipline problems, substance abuse, incarceration, and truancy. And whereas re research shows that youths who participate in a mentoring relationship are more likely to finish high school and continue on to college. And whereas National Mentoring Month gives us the opportunity to appreciate the staff and volunteers who dedicate their time to quality mentoring programs and celebrate the young people who have found their inner strength with the help of a mentor. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the School Board of Pinellas County, Florida, and the superintendent hereby proclaims the month of January 2020 as National Mentoring Month in our district and urge all observe this week by taking time to recognize and acknowledge the impact of mentors in Pinellas County who give so unselfishly of their time and talents so students can be successful. Thank you. Do we have a motion to adopt the proclamation? Okay, we have a motion to adopt the Proclamation and a second, I heard. Okay, and a second. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 And opposed, say no. And it also passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Okay. And thank you, Ms. Long. All right. We will now move on. I'm reading very carefully to make sure I'm going to the proper next step. The consent agenda. <laughs> we, have we have a motion. We have one more. What do we have? I see, I see Ron. Oh, gosh, I forgot. Yes. I'm really off my game today. No, you're fine. It's okay. You're fine. It's okay.
my New Year's resolution, I guess, needs to be that I pay more attention <laughs> at the board meetings. <laughs> so, Dr. Grego, yes. would you like to introduce the next item as Ms. Reagan is walking forward? I'd be more than happy to, and uh, I'll have to hurry up. So I she's am. I forward. am. One, one of the, I want the public to recognize that this past um, election cycle, a number of school districts went out for referendums, and one of the key components I got called on more than anything else was the fact that we have an independent citizens oversight committee. It's a strength of this referendum. It always has been and, and uh, will, will hopefully will continue to be. And so, and I appreciate the volunteerism that we're talking about uh, today of the individuals, the business people that are on this oversight committee. So Mr. Henrik is going to introduce Reagan Miller, who is chairing uh, this, this uh, the IC Rock committee. Thank you, Dr. Grego, Madam Chair, board members, Dr. Grego and staff. In November of 2004, Pinellas County voters approved a referendum to support public schools and have since renewed the referendum three times, most recently in 2016. The school board established priorities for spending these funds with 80% dedicated to teacher salaries and 20% of the funds to support reading, visual arts, performing arts, and technology. Since the referendum's inception, the board established the Independent Citizens Referendum Oversight Committee, or ICROC, to function as an advisory group to the school board. ICROC meets four times each year to review referendum expenditures and ensure that initiatives are following the intent of the board and the public. ICROC includes representatives from the Pinellas Economic Development Council, the Concerned Organization for the Quality Education of Black Students, the League of Women Voters, the Pinellas Realtor Organization, Pinellas County School Advisory Council Association, the Pinellas County Council of PTAs, and the Pinellas Education Foundation. Each year, the IC Rock chairperson presents an annual report to the school board in public. This year's chairperson is Ray Miller from the Pinellas County Council of the PTAs, and she's here to share oversight responsibilities and highlights from the 2018-19 school year. Mrs. Miller? Good morning. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the school board, Dr. Grego and staff. In the 15th year of the ref referendum, IC Rock continues to meet quarterly to oversee referendum expenditures and provide assurances to the board and the public that the funds are being spent uh, to meet the intent of the voters. In our quarterly reviews, we pay close attention to ensuring that this year's funds are spent on this year's students in a responsible and equitable manner. It is my pleasure to present the following highlights as examples of initiatives supported by the referendum. A total of $33.2 million allocated in the 2018-19 school year towards recruiting and retaining high quality teachers with $4,188 of every teacher's salary funded by the referendum. This is a $184 increase from 2017-18. Nearly $9 million was allocated to support the arts, reading, and technology. In the visual arts, 203 field trips for 13,607 students occurred, an increase of over 3,000 students taking referendum-funded field trips from the previous year. The mobile art museums visited 46 schools. Every art teacher received discretionary funds to purchase classroom materials, and hundreds of teachers benefited from enhanced professional development. Referendum funds also supported summer art camps and digital art programs. In the performing arts, 73 elementary classrooms received funding for instruments and equipment. New teachers received enhanced support to ensure a successful start to their careers. High school band uniforms were replaced at two schools. In partnership with the Florida Orchestra, funds supported the Florida Teaching Artist Initiative and funding was used for student field trips and performances at the Mahaffey Theater, Ruth Eckerd Hall, the Palladium Theater, St. Petersburg College, St. Petersburg Opera, and other locations. Additionally, referendum funds supported 85 schools to enhance theater and musical productions with accompanists from the community, as well as a new middle school summer music camp. In technology and digital learning, the long-term goal of outfitting every classroom with interactive technology through smart boards and other devices continued. Last year, 495 additional classrooms received new or replacement interactive boards and hundreds of additional teachers received training and support. 
The digital learning team also purchased software to help, to help support classroom instruction and the personalized learning pathway, in part through support um, from the referendum. In support of reading, the referendum supported every school with funds to, 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 uh, to purchase supplemental materials for their classrooms. These funds placed additional novels and instructional resources in school based upon the individual needs of the school. Reading intervention curriculum was purchased and imp implemented for all 77 elementary schools. Hundreds of teachers attended training specific to the needs of their students and Florida standards. And a student literacy conference was held for secondary students, exposing students to local and national authors, some of which were also Pinellas County School graduates. Referendum funds also supported the book bus, which visited every summer bridge site and many other community events. Finally, reading referendum funds also supported efforts to improve student scores on the ACT and SAT. As we look towards using referendum, as we look towards use continued referendum implementation, IC Rock will remain steadfast in providing oversight on these in invaluable resources and keep the school board and the public informed of the district's progress. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, before you leave, uh, would you please thank all of the people who serve on this committee for what they do? Because it really is important, both to the community and to the school board as well, to make sure. Not only are you looking at making sure the money is spent this year, you're also making sure that it's being spent in all of the schools. Um, maybe not every year, but in all of the schools over yes. a period of time. So thank them for their work. We I, really do appreciate it. I very definitely much. will do that. Good. Thank you, Ms. Miller. All right. Do we have a motion to accept the report as presented? And a second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion from the board? All right. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, say no. And it passes unanimously. Again, thank you very much. Um, since the agenda is just kind of a suggestion, shall we go to the consent this time? <laughs> No, nope. what are we doing? Yeah. That's yeah. Oh, okay. Good. Don't doubt yourself. All right. Any speakers on the agenda items? Board members I and John Congrego, we have two speakers this morning for specific agenda items. I don't like this. Our first is Ken Rush will speak to non consent number two. And our second will be Mark Clutho, who will speak to Consent number 10, 18, 19, and non-consent 1, 2, and 3. Good morning. Uh, thank you for having me, Madam Chair, members of the board. Dr. Grego and Mr. Herbig. Um, I'm here representing Habitat for Humanity, and as you know, um, Habitat has been in this county since about 1985. We are increasing our total of homes built throughout the county, and we're ready to dedicate our 600th home in the next couple of weeks. Uh, part of my job um, that takes me quite a bit of my time as the operations vice president is land acquisition, and land is not easy to find here in Pinellas County, as we all know. So I feel like I'm more of a real estate agent and it's not a job that I really wanted to do. However, um, it's what we need to do to in order to find homes or lots and available land to actually put homes on. Um, several months ago, we came across a lot that happened to be owned by the Pinellas County School System and started a conversation with Mr. Herbick and it has led to today. Um, what we are asking for is the donation of that lot down on 16th Avenue South in St. Petersburg. And along with the donation of the lot, just so everybody understands clearly, we've actually put together a LORA or a land use restriction that actually will allow the homeowner to be a member or a, an employee of the Pinellas County School System, as well as getting volunteers from the school system and hopefully interacting with vocational students throughout the entire build. So it's going to be a great partnership and partnerships are something that Habitat needs. It's something that we rely on. And this is just another way for us to partner with the community. You know, it's funny, I sit here hearing education and there's no secret that home life creates better education for any student. So we like to think about it as a way for us to actually uh, work with a family to give them not only just the, the possibility of home ownership, but to also give their kids a better chance to actually grow up in the school system and become better students and better, better members of society. So 
I'd love to take any questions if y'all have any. Station, when we get to the agenda Perfect. item. Thank you so much. Should I do it? I don't That's know. That's good. Thank you. <laughs> I'm telling you. All right. Mark Lutho Largo. Used to be you'd have enough time for agenda items. So I have to uh, do a little editing here. 718. Your strategic direction, effective and efficient use of resources, not 719. You go to learning in a safe environment. What's the difference? And then uh, going to the uh, Salvador Dali Museum Student Achievement. Well, you're going down to a monument to ignorance, that building with all that glass. Nothing should be constructed like that. And then this donation for the uh, Habitat for Stupidity. See, all those houses that they're constructing, they need to have a heating system. If anything's built correctly in Florida, it doesn't need a heating system. So people's money up in smoke, just like with your school buildings. Yeah. So people are going into their pockets and burning their money. Oh, yeah. How do you call that habitat for humanity when it's burning the planet? I mean, I'll go into more detail in a little bit with the article from the paper today, articles from the paper today. That's really bad. And then we have... 8-3, approval for the charter agreement for North Star Academy. Well, just like all your Pinellas County schools, you don't have one charter school that's a sustainable design all pathetic monuments to ignorance burning the planet it's disgusting truly disgusting more to come thank you are there any more speakers all right Seeing as there are no more speakers, we're going to go to the consent agenda. Move approval of the consent agenda items as presented. Do I have a, and we have a second. Okay, we have a motion and a second for the consent agenda to be passed. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. And it passes unanimously. Ms. Flowers? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, first of all, to the uh, Vice President from Habitat, it's good seeing you again. Um, and I have volunteered and supported and worked with Habitat for Humanity for a number of years. And I just want to clarify something because um, when things are said sometimes that are not accurate, I just want to make sure that people who are looking at this or will look at it later don't have the wrong impression of Habitat for Humanity. Habitat for Humanity does provide energy efficiency units. Um, when it comes to their refrigerators or whatever they're putting inside of those homes. Habitat for Humanity has partnered with Warwick Dunn, who has given a number of homes and presented those homes to single family moms, single families for well over 15 years. Um, Habitat for Humanity provides home ownership at a 15 year interest free mortgage. So for some individuals who would not be able to afford a home in this economy and this setting, Habitat for Humanity makes that dream a reality. 
um, Habitat for Humanity gives back to the community. Mike Sutton, who leads up the organization, saw fit to put an office strategically in South St. Petersburg, right off of 22nd Street, so that the community could be closer to its administrative offices um, and could receive the information that's needed and required to move towards home ownership. Habitat for Humanity has partnered with a number of organizations providing first-time homebuyer classes so that people know what they're getting into and, and understand that they may need to set aside money for repairs and um, you know, keeping the lawn maintained and things of that nature, being a good neighbor in the community where they're going. And Habitat for Humanity has now expanded into Pinellas and pa I mean Pasco and Polk counties and are doing some wonderful jobs. So I don't want anyone to think that Habitat is not energy efficient, does not think about uh, conservation, does not provide support for the community, um, and does not keep its honor and pledge uh, to make sure that persons who are first time homeowners not only become a homeowner, but remain in their home long after Habitat is done building their house. So I wanna thank you for coming today. I'm so glad that we voted to pass agenda item number 7.22. I fully support it. Um, that lot space has been vacant for a long time. And this is just another way that Pinellas County Schools can partner with community organizations providing a quality of life service for individuals who attend our school system and the parents who we are asking to be a part of our community as it relates to education. So thank you very much for coming today. Have a great day. Yeah. So we will move on now to item 8.1, request approval of the memorandum of understanding with the Salvador Dali Museum. We have a motion? A motion to approve. Okay, motion to approve. Second. All righty, Dr. Grego. Just as mentioned before, the importance of partnerships and certainly uh, the Dali Museum is certainly one of our strongest partners. And with that, I want to ask Jonathan Ogle, who is a pre-K through 12 visual arts specialist, to come forward with a special guest also from the Dali Museum. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Madam Chair, members of the board, Dr. Grego and staff, I'm honored to be here today with Peter Tush, Curator of Education at the Dali Museum. Since the 1990s, the Visual Arts Department has partnered with local art museums to create portable mini museums called Artmobiles. Over the span of three years, two traveling mobile uh, portables are circulated visiting nearly every Pinellas County public elementary school. K through five students have the opportunity to visit an art mobile with their visual arts teacher while it is stationed at their school, resulting in approximately 14,000 students attending every year. As they take the 30 to 40 minute tour inside, students enjoy a museum-like experience specific to their grade level, learning about various artists, the history and meaning of those artworks, and have close-up interactive experiences with the selected reproduced pieces. The Artmobile program has made it possible for our elementary students to experience the look and feel of an art museum without even leaving their school. Rough Random Funds have helped out our Artmobile program through improved upkeep and upgrades, as well as better curriculum development and teacher orientation trainings. The Dolly Artmobile is currently being refreshed at the Walter Pinnell Service Center after a three year tour. We'll be back on the road in exactly one month, making stops at eight elementary schools before the end of this school year. Bay Point Elementary being the first stop from February 13th to March 4th. The Dolly Artmobile presents a very unique perspective through an engaging introductory video viewed by students immediately upon entering. Two gadflies, a, a grandfather and his nine-year-old granddaughter named Gala toured the Dali Museum in downtown St. Petersburg, discussing the works of Salvador, Salvador Dali. Using a drone and live action, along with animation, this educational documentary film about the amazing art of Salvador Dali is designed to teach students about the art style called surrealism and how Dali's art was inspired by dreams math and science. Grandpa, the Spanish gadfly tour guide, knew Dali well and was featured in Dali's paintings. 
After the video concludes, the students then are provided a tour of the reproduced artworks by the art teacher, being like a docent um, that you would have in an art museum. Our school district is very fortunate to have this vital partnership with the Dolly Museum. As shown in our new MOU, the Dolly Museum does a lot to make this artmobile experience possible. From designing the exterior to the interior, determining what interactive features and artworks would engage and stimulate the students, to creating a high quality video, the Dolly Museum works hand in hand with our department to produce the very best mini museum experience possible for students. Attending national and statewide art education professional conferences, I know for a fact that this innovative program is envied tremendously by other school districts and art museums. I would like to introduce you to Peter Tush, Curator of Education at the Dolly Museum, to share a few words with you about the Dolly Artmobile program. Peter? Thank you, Jonathan. Welcome. Um, good morning, Dr. Grego, staff and board members. Um, I want to say it's just such a wonderful opportunity to thank you all and talk a little bit about this opportunity to partner with Pinellas County Schools with this MOU partnership uh, over the Artmobile. Um, Pinellas County Schools has had a partnership with the Dolly Museum going back to 1985 when we started the Student Surrealist Art Exhibition. And since then, we've been able to uh, contemplate the expansion of the museum, which is potentially coming up. And it's more important than ever for our community to be aware of Dolly and the culture that we bring forward and to share this with our students and our community. Um, through this Artmobile, we have the opportunity to really expand the opportunity to contact students and families and make them aware of us. Uh, we have approximately 2,000 students from Pinellas counties come on field trips every year. This Artmobile allows us to reach 40,000 students in Pinellas County, which is just overwhelming. And we're so honored to have this opportunity. It's one of our most important edu educational initiatives. Uh, we're investing $10,000 this year in creating a magnetic board for students to interact with uh, some of the key symbols from Dolly's work. And next summer, we plan to repaint the outside to continue to make this a, a really vital and attractive part of the um, Pinellas County community. And for students, our big goal is that this offers us the opportunity to expand their understanding and awareness of Dolly culture, of Dolly culture, community, and uh, the, their own personal values in relation to that. So can't thank you anymore for the opportunity to have this partnership. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Is that, okay, is that it? All right, we have, all. we have a motion and a second already. Board members, any comments? All right, then we will vote. We have a motion and a second to um, approve the Memorandum of Understanding with the Salvador Dali Museum. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. It passes unanimously. Thank you very much. And thank, thank you. you for what you're doing. Thank you, Josh. Tell so, me, hey guys, hello. <laughs> all right, our next item is to request approval of the donation of the land to Habitat for Humanity of Pinellas County Incorporated and adoption of the land use restriction agreement. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Dr. Grego? Yes, Madam Chair, I, I too want to thank Mr. Herbick for his interaction and partnering with Habitat for Humanity. As you notice in, in 7.22, this board took action and the consent agenda to claim that that property was um, surplus property for not no for not not for educational use once you approve that now we're at the we set the table to go ahead and donate this property for for as um, uh, the gentleman said for a house so thank you so much for being here I too will and I and I hope that not only our students but I've challenged my staff and myself we'll be out there building this house together so let me turn it over to Mr. Herbeck and give you a few details of this. But this is an exciting project. This is a total mm -hmm. turnkey that we, we look forward to one of our own employees living in this house. Thank you, Dr. Grego, Madam Chair, and board members and staff. Um, I just wanted to share, and um, for the public's knowledge as well, is that this board has a very long history of partnering with municipalities and outside agencies to really maximize the use of our properties, whether it be a building or a piece of land. And 
you know, some of the examples that we have that are very successful right now is partnering with the Clearwater Historical Society, um, with the old South Ward School, partnering with the um, city of St. Petersburg and leasing what used to be Rio Vista Elementary for a passive park, which I know that the members of the community use um, constantly. And then um, even repurposing a closed school, the old Harris Tibbs School, mm -hmm. uh, with the Starting Right Now organization to provide um, housing for um, at-risk youth. So this is just a, yet again another example of, of the boards partnering um, with those outside agencies. Again, today we're extremely proud to say that we're partnering with Habitat for Humanity. Uh, the parcel of land that we're talking about is located um, about five, six blocks directly due south of Gibbs High School on 16th Avenue South. It's uh, about 50 feet wide by 112 feet long. Um, so we obviously can't build a school there. <laughs> and um, what we wanted to do is, again, use that, um, that history and, and build on those partnerships and find a very useful um, um, use, of, not to be redundant, of this property. So when we did reach out to um, Habitat for Humanity, Ken was one of our first um, contacts. And I mean, I, I, I can't thank uh, Ken and Habitat enough. This process has been extremely easy. We've learned a lot about Habitat for Humanity. Uh, we learned a lot about what's going on with our community and people's um, struggle sometimes to find affordable housing. And um, one of the things that struck us is not only um, can we donate this land for a very worthy cause, but we're very excited and very pleased with um, Habitat's um, um, agreement to go ahead and for the first five years, um, the first owner and the second owner of this uh, will be Pinellas County Schools employees. Um, and again, we're extremely um, happy about that. I'm very proud that um, Habitat is partnering with us with that. They've also agreed that to the greatest extent possible, and when we get closer to construction time, we'll, we'll obviously give you a timeline when we um, see that on the horizon. But when we get closer to construction time to the greatest extent possible, we will use students. Uh, students from Jacobson Technical High School have already worked with Habitat for Humanity in the past. Uh, we'll enlist the um, use and um, uh, of students from St. Petersburg Construction Academy, uh, both obviously for the work that they can do, but also what a fantastic educational opportunity to prevent the, or present to those students as well. And then also we've talked with Mark Hunt, and I know that um, Pinellas Technical College has a lot of students uh, very eager and willing to um, help with this project as well. Our own maintenance and facilities department um, will be involved as well after work hours. And uh, we are already um, getting ready to order um, uh, you all and uh, myself, everybody, some hard hats. And um, we'll get out there ourselves and, um, and help as much as we can and really make it uh, a Pinellas County Schools community event uh, to build this house, not only for the community, but for some of our employees as well. So, again, I want to thank Ken and uh, for all the efforts for, uh, that he's put forth and uh, Habitat has put forth as well. Um, and ask that you go ahead and today approve uh, this donation of this property, uh, now surplus property, uh, no longer suited for, for um, educational use to Habitat for Humanity. Board members, we laid a um, Google map on your desk area of the exact location. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, right, right. Okay. Yes, it's... Uh, Labeled the other, proposed yeah. habitat parcel. Right there. Yep. You'll see a little a yellow. Yes. Looks like a push peg. It'll be right there. I'll listen to you. Well, you'll be All right. <laughs> okay. Thank you, uh, Ms. Flowers, for your comments earlier about habitat. Um, I appreciate it. I've had the opportunity to work in a house as well, a um, couple houses actually. And so I would encourage you, if, uh, if and when uh, we are told about it that it's, it's very definitely worth worth the time and effort that we put into it so yeah <laughs> those that shouldn't get hammers or electrical hammers tools they make sure that it's fitted towards your abilities so okay okay see it's not just me we're all losing <laughs> So we have a motion and we have a second to approve the um, donation of the land to Habitat for Humanity of Pinellas County Incorporated and the adoption of the land use restriction agreement. All in favor say aye. 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 And opposed say no. And it also passes unanimously. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ken. Thank you. And our next item is a request the approval of a five-year charter agreement for North Star Academy of Pinellas.
Do we have a motion? Motion. Okay, and a second? second. We have a motion and a second. Dr. Grego? Yes, Madam uh, Chair and, and school board members, as you remember, this uh, five-year charter agreement was presented uh, at a board, at a recent board workshop. And, uh, and to remind the board and just go over uh, for the public, uh, Rick Wolf is here to speak about this agreement. Good, good morning. Thank you, Dr. Grego. This is the last step in the charter school application approval process. Uh, this is the request to approve the five-year charter agreement for North Star Academy. The uh, Pinellas County School Board you, uh, unanim unanimously approved this uh, application on the May 14th board meeting in 2019. Uh, as you may recall, this uh, North Star Academy is a school that's going to work with the overage middle and high school students in grades 7 through 12. They're going to start the school with approximately 300 students. They will be partnering with Edison Learning as their management company, and they are seeking a location in South St. Pete, which they are still currently looking for a location. All right. Any comment? Yeah. Um, this is the one that did. The one that this didn't, one um, we um, denied at our last meeting. Okay. So we have a motion and a second to approve the five-year charter agreement for North Star Academy of Pinellas. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. And it passes unanimously. Thank you very much. And thank thank you. you for the work. All right. Now we'll go down to items of new business. Items introduced by the superintendent. Yes, Madam Chair and school board members, uh, I rarely do this. In fact, I don't remember if I've ever done it in my tenure here, but I do would like to share with you because our graduation rates just came out this past Thursday and uh, a press release just doesn't seem to uh, cut it. And we have um, we have a board meeting today and I want to share with you if you can take a look at your, your monitors and for the, the people in the audience and the public a tremendous increase in, and want to just say thanks as a means of thank you to to um, all of our principals, all of our teachers, every single employee that contributes to the graduation rate. The grad rate is one of those data elements that seems to be the icing on the cake. Everyone uh, at the end of the day, we look at math, we look at science, we look at a lot of subject areas, we look at performance in the arts and performance. But at the end of the day, after 13 years, we want to make sure students are successful graduates. And so uh, this tends to be the, the driving data element and to have an 88.44, which is once again, certainly with the highest in our district's history, is certainly something to celebrate. We, ro we rose 2.44% um, higher than last year. Uh, we outpaced the state uh, for the first time in, in a while, but really if you take a look at our growth from 2013 to, to 19, we uh, elevated our graduation rate by 16.5%, which is the uh, most rapid increase of any major or large school district in, in the state of Florida. Our one of uh, points of pride in, in terms of where we're going, our African-American graduation rate from last year to this year rose 5.1 percentage points to an 81.3, and that's 25 percentage points uh, since 2013, which is a five-year growth rate uh, of that. So we're extremely proud of 81.5. The achievement gap between black and non-black now has shrunk for the record low of a single digit of 8.7 from 11.9. And this gap, obviously, from you can see from the chart, uh, was a whole lot higher. I'm going to share with you in the next slide both the Hispanic um, subgroup and also the African-American subgroup where we started in, from the same year, 2013. African-American uh, subgroup, we started at 56.4. It's now at 81, as I mentioned, 0.3, which is a significant in increase. And our Hispanic of 62.2, and now we're at 86.7. So we're starting to hover around the same um, it's the same mark uh, with that. Um, our Hispanic graduation rate from last year to this year was up 1.7 percentage point. Okay. If you dive a little deeper in terms of our students with disabilities and what Lynn Mowat and many others are doing within our district, that the ESC graduation rate spiked at 7.2 percent from last year to this year and just hovers right underneath 80 percent, 79.7 percent. And our English learners 
um, uh, Dr. Karak uh, works with our ESOL prop population, rose three percentage points, and they now uh, are sitting at an 81.5 percent. 14 of the 16 traditional high schools uh, increased their graduation rate, which is phenomenal. Some might ask, you know, we had an 88.4 uh, percent, four four per percentage point. Um, why, when we look, take a look at all of the graduation rates of all of the high schools, they seem to be higher. What, how do you do that? And so I want to say and answer that question through a thank you. A thank you through our educational alternative programs. Thank you to programs like Distant Academy and Bayside High School and Pinellas Secondary and Leelman Innovation, which, by the way, had a 70 percent graduation rate. Uh, which is is truly high for some of our most struggling students in Pinellas Gulf Coast. And, and our special centers also graduate students with special needs, too. So when we talk a, about graduation rate, the federal graduation rate includes every single student who is a member of the Pinellas County School District. And those students go into the denominator. There's so many people to thank, but one of the champions of this graduation is Dr. Rita Vasquez, and I know she's in the back, and she was waving her hands before about Dixie's challenge to, to increase, and so thank you, uh, uh, Rita and Dr. Vasquez, and for your monthly meetings and, and uh, for, for all we're doing. One of the things that I think our, our district kind of, it was kind of an aha, is as we started to look at all of the other districts, the uh, top 10, when I say size districts, we're never at the point we are today. And, and that's what I mentioned before, is that our, our acceleration of graduation is, is becoming faster over the last five years than other districts. So today, um, it, you know, it's as good as today. And so Orange County and, and Pinellas County, if you take a look at the largest, most urban school districts in the state of Florida, we are leading that way. Uh, amongst others, and we were always in the middle or somewhere sometimes in the bottom third of that. So um, congratulations to this board also, because I've never come to this board with a, with a strategy or a thought about how to increase graduation rate. There's ever been a hesitation of your support with the ACT and SAT daytime administration, with many of the things that we're doing to support and to equalize the playing field with so many of our students. This is a result of that, and I think we ought to be very, very proud, and this community needs to be extremely proud. Sometimes when we, we get lost in percentages, but if we take those percentages, like what I said before, 16% or 25% with our African-American or another 18% with our Hispanic, we equate those to numbers. We're looking at 1,200 plus students who are walking with a graduation, a high school graduation, we're changing lives. I think that's the part that we have to never, uh, never forget. Our goal in our strategic plan is this board, and, and I always say we want to stretch. Our goal for 2020 is, uh, we all know it, it's 90%. Um, you know what? We have to keep stretching. It gets more and more difficult, but we're going to keep stretching, and we're going keep, we're, we're to keep fighting for that because as we fight for that, we win uh, a graduate, we win a student at a time. And so... You know, when we talk about 100% student success, we need to think about it in terms of every single strategy that we have for our district. So congratulations to this board and to this community, to the mentors and to everyone who contributes. It's every, this is a elementary, middle and high school year. This is not just a high school graduation rate, it's a school district graduation rate. And I always express that to our elementary, our VPK, our pre-K, is that you're, start, you're planting the seed for graduation. Middle school, you're still planting and, and fertilizing that seed for graduation. We all own our graduation rate. It's that one data element that I think we all need to embrace. So congratulations to this board and to this community for doing so. Um, I believe that's all the, the slides I had there. And thank you for indulging me to be able to do that. I, I typically um, don't do that. And I, I promise I won't make it a habit, but I think we need to um, celebrate that. The other, other couple of uh, comments is that our district application program is fully underway. Also our kindergarten, ready, set kindergarten is, is, is starting this week too. So um, two of our district application assistant nights are available um, tonight. In fact, January 14th from 537 at Gibbs High School. And then this, this week on the 16th from 437 is in the student assignment office. I continue to express to people, look at our website, all of the information, the dates and times and locations 
are there. And um, as I mentioned, the kindergarten open houses where we register students and parents can register their students directly at the schools for kindergarten. Uh, that takes it starts to take place tonight, the 14th and 15th and 16th, depending upon uh, which date the elementary schools um, selected. Uh, Tamara Ing Inglacia, our food service specialist at Belcher Elementary School, was named the Pinellas County Schools 2019-2020 Support Employee of the Year in Celebration. Thank you to Achieva. Thank you to Gary Rangoli. Thank you for long-standing uh, support. And um, Tamara will go on to represent this district at the state's related uh, Employee of the Year Award. And I heard she's just a tremendous individual who has garden clubs at her school. Uh, and designs uh, garden beds and now produces fresh fruits and, and vegetables for her school. And she also incorporates a lot of mathematics into, into um, her job at, at, at Belcher. So uh, she's going to represent us very well. And I know that a number of board members might have some issues or some things to say about it because that you also attended at Feather Sound. So congratulations to her. I want to thank our parents. I, I, sometimes we forget to thank them because over the holidays, we challenge our students, but a lot of times those parents are the ones that are really partnering with us. We had over 12,000 lessons were completed in Dreambox over the winter break. We had uh, students on Mayan iStation over that break. This takes parental partnership too. It's not just the students. They don't wake up and say, this is how I want to spend my my day off. So we, we, I want to say thank you to the parents. Uh, thank you to the parents of high school, middle school, elementary, students who got on Clever, students who actually logged on to their personalized learning platform uh, over those holidays. We're going to continue to do so. I mean, think of the thousands of books that were read from on my on over those two weeks. That's good. And we're going to continue to do it over our spring break also. I want to say uh, congratulations to the Journeys in Journalism program at Melrose Elementary School, John Hopkins Middle School, and Lakewood High School for the opening night of uh, Through Our Eyes. That's a Midtown and Beyond photography exhibit. That's always a tremendous exhibit at Studio uh, 620 in downtown St. Petersburg. It will continue the, the, with the Taste of the City event at, um, at 5 p.m. Uh, this Thursday, and this exhibit will continue on all the way through January 29th. So if you have an opportunity to uh, to go down there and see our, our the tremendous work of our students, I, I, I encourage you to. Today starts a legislative session. Um, I wanna say uh, thank you to this board and to many others and uh, to in the community and, and as we, we, we get uh, we get started with this. I know there was a rally yesterday in support of teacher pay, and uh, we, we are encouraged and we want to stay encouraged. We're working with our elected officials to see that teachers are fairly uh, compensated and continues to, to work on language that will work for us in Pinellas County and certainly the rest of the, of the state. I also want to say that the Career Acceleration Program that is part of your legislative platform is, is being approved and is moving forward for funding. That's that summer career acceleration uh, for $300,000. That's moving. Teacher professional development as a district, I will share more of that. But I had a workshop, but we are named as one of the pilot districts in the state for professional development, which gives us perhaps a little greater flexibility and perhaps hopefully uh, greater resources to work with our teachers and, and our principals. There's a hardening of, of uh, school bill that will come that uh, Mr. Herbick is, is staying on top of. Uh, as you know, in the consent agenda, we applied for additional funds for through the state for uh, continuing to fund uh, the safety and hardening of, of our schools. So we look forward to a, a tremendous session, uh, one of what I think is going to be very, very busy. I know that we were at the, lots being spoken about the Dolly Museum today, but we were at the Dolly Museum, and I want to thank Dr. Carr for being there um, because we rolled out Senator Roussan and Representative Diamond uh, presented to uh, co uh, companion bills to recognize students who are involved with the arts over their high school career with a seal at graduation. And as we were working on this in our district, we decided, let's why don't we take the lead on this? And why don't we see if we can do this throughout the state of Florida? So I want to thank both the representative and senator for leading the way and also Jean Reynolds, um, uh, you know, she's here. Yeah, I saw her before. 
but really championing this too. And I'm sure Dr. Carr might have some comments later on, but we were, it was a good day at the Dolly and, and uh, for Dr. Hine to really take us in and, and, um, and, uh, and host us there. And it was a great crowd there too. So thank you. That concludes my remarks and happy new year. This is our first meeting of the new year. Look forward to a great year. I have no report today. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And items introduced by board members. We have Ms. Lantino. Uh, I have a comment. Um, the uh, the, um, the issue that we have um, per pertaining to the uh, dis disruption for the uh, not having uh, having the uh, the schools not having a fulfillment for this for this for this for the session mm -hmm. so that school is not going to be is not going to be uh re required it's not going to be required and we're not going to have school we're not going to have anything of that magnitude right you're talking about the teachers that right. yesterday went to tallahassee no 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 that's it's the week before it's the week before uh, i'll pull it up I'll pull it up. Uh, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> How about if we go on to Miss Long while you're looking for it? That's right. And when you have it, we'll come right back to you. That's right. Okay, Ms. Long? Yes. Um, I just want to uh, talk about a program that's starting in Dunedin. It's called a lending arm. It is for young single mothers who are overwhelmed with parenting. A lot of times young people, a baby is adorable, but they don't realize the amount of work that goes into it. And um, one of my, my dear friends, Alicia uh, Collins Andrews is one of the women helping. I don't remember the director's name. But what a program. It's two uh, mobile homes that she put on her property in Dunedin, and they have 24-hour care. When a per woman is feeling overwhelmed with their children, they can go to this location, and they have volunteers. They read to the children. They engage with the children while mom, they take her, and they maybe take her out for a pedicure just to give her time to bring her back down so that it doesn't escalate. The lady who started this was one of the counselors for the woman that um, hurt her child, killed her child in, in Largo. Yeah. What a beautiful idea. Mm -hmm. And they are taking donations for diapers, uh, books, anything that would help them. So I, I just wanted to give them a, a heads up and a congratulations. It took her about eight months to get the program mm -hmm. up and running, but I think that's pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. Also last night was the Lakewood basketball game. And I, I can't go without telling you, um, when they came out over their jerseys, they had a yellow t-shirt and it said Muhammad on it, the young man that was killed up in um, Panama City. City. And there was a moment of silence. The boys wanted to do this, and they got the T-shirts. What a, a beautiful um, way for them to show their respect for young men that are, you know, sometimes finding their way, but they understood the importance. So I, I want to give a shout-out to Lakewood because I really thought that was beautiful. Mm -hmm. And finally, this Saturday is our MLK in Tarpon Springs the breakfast at 8 o'clock at the United Methodist Church is free to all. Chef Ryan from the Tarpon Springs Culinary Arts will once again be cooking a phenomenal meal. And then it's followed by the parade where our very own Dr. Grego will be the master of ceremonies for the parade. The Grand Marshal. Grand Marshal. The Grand Marshal with um, <laughs> Rod Davis. So you, you're going to have a lot of fun. With who? 
Uh, Rod Davis, the St. Pete College um, provost. Rod it's Davis? Rod, yeah, Rod Davis, All yes. Right. All so right. it's a great day. And then afterwards, there's a barbecue in uh, Bennett Park out there. So there you go. Okay. Joanne, did you find it? Um, I can't find it now. Okay. Well, <laughs> but give me a signal when you find I'm it scrolling. and we'll get to you. And we'll go on to Dr. Carr. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And um, thank you for acknowledging Jean Reynolds yeah. earlier, um, Dr. Grego. I, some, I think sometimes we have so many shining stars within our district, but she really stands out as an incredible figure. Um, not only does she support the individuals working within our schools, but she represents the arts and education throughout our state and nationally, having herself been recognized on numerous occasions by her peers, both nationally and statewide. So she is just an incredible asset to our district. And she did a wonderful job coordinating um, and giving input to our local delegation. Um, I wanted to express thank you to our local delegation as they're heading up um, to Tallahassee for oftentimes seeking input mm -hmm. from us as a district. Um, often we express words of concern and rightly so about the lack of local control um, on a number of topics. And I do appreciate, while I'd like to see that not be the case where we do have more local control, um, I do appreciate when our local legislators uh, reach out to us and work with us before they move forward um, and while they're even mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. Tallahassee. So a special thank you mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. Representative mm -hmm. Diamond and Senator mm -hmm. Roussan for their close mm -hmm. partnership with, with Ms. Reynolds. Um, I also had the opportunity, we've been away for a little bit, mm -hmm. right? So to meet with FAST, and I see some of their representatives are here today. Um, they again extended the invitation to me Nehemiah um, and also we're advocating for the piloting at 10 schools. So I wanted to continue to express that message. Um, one thing I think would be very beneficial to us would be to, at this point, since we've been implementing this for a number of, of years now, to really have a, um, and I know we've collected these data points and at different times, um, but to pull it together um, and have us truly have at least at an implementation level evaluation of the progress and, and where things are going. So I think that would be beneficial to us as a board as we're mm -hmm. reviewing and making decisions regarding to the implementation for us to really see um, some of the expected outcomes and where we are in terms of progress monitoring. So you're, you know, a foundational implementation. We're at the appropriate point to really have that done. Um, so we can go forward with, with effective decision making. Um, and thank you also, I met with Mr. Diner. Um, I know he, we, with it being mentor, re us recognizing our mentors, and also the, va I know we have so many programs to give folks opportunities. Uh, Mr. Fletcher speaking today about um, expansion and getting more folks involved. And I would just ask the public and individuals um, as, your time is available, and I know we all have very busy lives. If you could, that's one way to make a contribution to education is to become a mentor. And not everyone can be a lunch pal or work with Take Stock in Children, but there are a variety of other programs um, where you can get involved and it can fit your time and availability. So I would urge you to contact your local school and work with the family and community liaison at that school to find ways that you can get involved because we all need to contribute to that caring element um, to help our students move forward. And that's not something we can put a price tag on because it's your time. And we really, we, we need individuals who can give up their time. Um, and lastly, I just wanted to say um, Happy New Year and thank you to the families also for um, putting time in with your children over vacation mm -hmm. and having some of them, um, making them read when sometimes they were really tempted. I know we all wanted to binge watch the um, Mandalorian and, and check out Baby Yoda, 
but the the mm -hmm. opportunity was there to really expand the learning and i hope you'll continue to support your children at home with reading every night as is in our student code of conduct that that as partners we will continue to to do that and help us move and continue to improve on our graduation rate so thank you very much good thank you mr dudley thank you madam chair um i had the privilege last friday of going to the Florida Music Educators Association Conference in Tampa at the Convention Center. And I talked to Jean Reynolds, she was there obviously. And um, uh, it was, a, I, I made a special point to go in and see the uh, group of music educators from Pinellas County and uh, walked in and said hello and told them what a great job they do, which they do. And uh, they're sometimes underappreciated, but uh, I, um, I want to let them know how much we appreciate what they do. Um, and my daughter also got a, an award there. She's a music teacher, so uh, that was kind of a nice. Yeah. But immediately after that, I, had to, I, I wanted to spend more time there, but I, I, I had to leave because... Um, at Northeast High School, we had the privilege of seeing one of our graduates who, uh, if I mention his name, some of you may know it, some of you may not, his name is Kenny Leon. Um, Kenny Leon is a producer, director, actor, African-American person who's a 1974 graduate of Northeast High School. And if you may not know any of his work, uh, how about Raisin in the Sun, which you won a Tony for? Um, Much Ado About Nothing. He's worked with Viola Davis and Denzel Washington. And he was in town and he came by the high school and met with a segment of the students. They didn't have a huge assembly, but they wanted to bring in the kids involved in drama and music and so forth. And I had the privilege of sitting there. I got there, by the time I drove over to Tampa, I, I heard all about five minutes of his presentation. It was wonderful. He told kids about, you know, don't give up if you have a dream. You know, he said, it's not easy, except rejection, because it's very commonplace in that business. And um, I, it, it was just, it was wonderful. He's won two Tony Awards, very dynamic, wonderful person. And um, he uh, is getting, he had to go back to New York because he's getting ready to open up a new play with, uh, uh, what is it, James Allen Greer? Is that his first name? Uh, Allen Greer, the yeah, actor. He's David doing Allen a play Greer. with him on Broadway opening up the end of the month. And uh, so it was. It was quite a quite a privilege to to be there and and listen to him. He was. It was excellent. The kids were absolutely riveted to every word he said. And um, I want to thank. Uh, uh, it, it was kind of an interesting story how we got there. Um, Lee Lee Benjamin, who passed away just last month, and uh, he had seen him and brought back a flyer on him and we found out, oh, that's a guy that graduated from Northeast and, and through some, my, my, my second year there, he graduated. I, I did not have him as a student, but I had his brother and his, and uh, so it was, it was kind of weird. I mean, I mean, it just, it, we were talking about him a couple of weeks ago and there he shows up. Um, anyway, it was a, it was a great, great uh, event. And the last thing I want to mention is my, it seems like I do it every month. Um, we're starting uh, sports, winter sports, and there's a lot of plays going on and a lot of activities by our students. And I really encourage you to go and support these programs. Uh, we all know how tight money is. And, and uh, you know, when they, when they put on a play, at a school, 
you have to understand that they have to pay for the rights of that play, you know, and that costs money and they, they're not cheap. So they have to pay for that and then they have all the setting and all that stuff to do. And it's very, very, very important that you go, that you go to support them because if they don't, then where does the money come from? So it's very important and it's a very nominal fee to get in. Most plays are five or ten dollars to go and have a these kids do a great job. And you may be seeing a Kenny Leon sometime down the future. And uh, so anyway, uh, I would encourage you all to, to please find a way, find out about schools in your neighborhood or around and offering a play or something to go to. And it goes to for sports. You know, sports cost money. We're starting lacrosse now and a couple of schools are increasing that. And um, it's uh, $4,000 per team to start up. The money comes from somewhere. So I please encourage you to go and support your local schools and um, again, Happy New Year to everybody late. If you want to look at it as Happy New Year for next year, okay. But Happy New Year. <laughs> and um, it's good to be back. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Ms. Flowers? Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I'm going to start off with the Kenny Leon because I had that on my list as well. He was um, acknowledged by the Sankofa series about two years ago um, when we brought him in um, and uh, we were at the University of South Florida's activity center. So when I heard that he was going to be at Northeast High, um, I was really pleased, but um, I'm grateful that he and Angela Bassett both always come back to the community and they always uh, try to support an initiative when they come back. Um, Angela Bassett did a little mini commercial for us for the Dr. Carter G. Woodson African American Museum. Um, since we will be moving uh, that location uh, to Commerce Park right across from uh, Callaloo Restaurant and need money for building and construction. And so she um, lent her name and her face in doing that presentation. And so Kenny Leon does the same thing. And I'm, I'm just really excited that they do come back and support the youth in our community. Um, along those same lines, Afram Sykes will be starring in the Broadway play uh, for Michael Jackson, which is like huge. Afram Sykes went to Gibbs High School and graduated from the PCCA program. So um, I'm going to try to make it up there to see his play. So I'll let you know how that goes. Um, I had a chance to visit uh, Distant um, School and uh, the principal there, Tamika Hughes-Leaks, uh, allowed me to you know, tour the school, talk to individuals in the school. Um, the students were in their first day back a reorientation session about what the rules are and things of that nature. And I was just very pleased to see all that they have going on over there. And it really explains why uh, exactly what Dr. Grego said, why we see so many of our alternative schools having an increase in the graduation rate. When you just see that um, the students there, if someone says something to them, they, they just popped right back in line. It wasn't a back and forth and all of that stuff. They just really plop, popped right back in line. So I was really appreciative of that. But the one thing I really love is um, they have a uh, nail tech and massage class and all of that. So in a few weeks, they will be open for the public to come in so the students can practice because they have to do so many practicums. So just keep that in mind if you need your nails done or massage or whatever, keep that in mind and go to distant and that way you can pay a small fee, but also support a student to get the hours that they need. So shout out to um, the principal and her staff, the SRO who was there at the time. I really enjoyed my visit there. I serve as the vice chair for Pinellas County's Complete um, count committee, and I also serve as the chair of one of the subcommittees. I just want to reiterate to you that um, the census this year, this time, will be electronic. So normally you, you're used to getting this big, thick packet in the mail. It will be electronic. You will do uh, your census form electronically. For those who don't complete it, they will be contacted um, by employees who are hired by the census. Um, and then a actual uh, census document will be mailed to you. So I am just really reiterating when you get that, please don't put it off. Please complete it and get it in. We're talking about $44 billion mm -hmm. 
and the Coming services the range from education to health care to social services, mm -hmm. support services. So if we're not counted, then um, our money is not provided. So please, please, please make sure that you participate in that process. And we will be having a number of community activities and events just to reiterate those points. Um, Jack Fletcher had to leave, but I just want to uh, reiterate the importance as my colleagues have as well when it comes to mentoring. Um, I've known Jack since I was seven or eight years old. His One of his younger sisters, Wendy Fletcher, and I have been friends for years. We're more like sisters. His mom um, was a small business owner, Miss Fletcher. She owned her own hair salon that was attached to her home. So I spent many a day and night in their house. And um, I just love and appreciate what he and Mr. Oliver does. Mr. Oliver created a program in 2001 called Eagles Can Fly specifically geared towards African-American males. Mm -hmm. He ended up presenting that program at Admiral Farragut. Um, they allowed him to come in, whatever um, arena he could provide that program to um, help African-American males understand that while there are rules, there are also opportunities for growth and development. And um, there is a way that you can be successful uh, in sports and music, but also in academics. So Mr. Oliver, kind of when you when he asks you to do something, um, you just say, yes, where do I need to be? <laughs> um, so I do want to thank them um, for all that they're doing. And I think they're doing a wonderful job and they show up in mass when they're community events. So he's already gone, but thank you so much. And hopefully that will be relayed back to him. Um, I also want to uh, thank the women in the making and the men in the making program. They had a number of things during the holiday break that kept youth in the community involved and engaged. Um, and what I did notice was I did not see as many articles as it relates to burglaries or auto thefts. Mm -hmm. So the programs and the support things that we're doing during the holiday break and during the summer, um, I think we're beginning to see that fruit pay off because I'm seeing um, fewer and fewer numbers. And I also wanna give a super kudos to uh, Chief Holloway and to the sheriff for um, the programs that we have um, that allow first time offenders, both adults and children um, to uh, go through a certain program and receive that forgiveness and not have that on their record. So I wanna thank them for that. FSBA will be occurring. FSBA day of the legislature is uh, the 22nd through the 24th. And um, so we look forward to that. Um, just a little side note, uh, Angela Roussan, the wife of Senator Roussan, escorted the mom of Muhammad into the chambers today for opening day. Mm -hmm. And they received a rounding applause, of course. And um, I know that took a lot of strength for his mom to do that. I had a chance to uh, conversate with her and the family. I was there at the candlelight vigil at Lakewood High School. A number of teachers and support staff and community people came out. The mayor came out and um, also some staff from the city of St. Peter. It was absolutely wonderful to acknowledge him. So um, I just wanted to share that little tidbit that Senator Roussan did speak with leadership there and they allowed her to be escorted in on the floor and acknowledged her and acknowledged her son and um, how he gave his life for his country. So I want to say that. Um, there is a, a new, I well, not a new item, a returning item coming to um, the state, Mr. Herbig, you may have already heard about it, but Senator Lauren Book has reintroduced her bill for panic buttons in all public schools, Senate Bill 70. Um, and the House bill companion is House Bill 23. Last year didn't quite make it, but this year um, it has already passed one committee and um, it's assigned already to the Appropriations mm -hmm. Committee. Mm -hmm. So it may get a little bit more traction. Um, Senator Lauren Book served on the um, uh, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas Committee. Um, and so I just wanted to share that in case, you know, that makes it through. I think we'd be prepared and ready to make that happen uh, in Pinellas County. You all do such a wonderful job, but I just kind of wanted to put that on the radar. Um, and then I've just been reading, um, even prior to the start of the session, those things that uh, Chris Browse, who will be the incomer, incoming mm -hmm. speaker, what he's focused on and what uh, Chris Lavalo, who chairs one of the most important committees, mm -hmm. what they've been focused on. And um, uh, Chris Lavalo is focused on child welfare, having pushed forward all of the measures related to Jordan's law and things of that nature, but that does not mean that they won't be focused on education. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to share that publicly. So when we're going up and talking with them, we'll kind of have an idea of 
kind of what's happening and where they're going. But again, um, Mr. Herbert, you and your team do an absolutely wonderful job. And so I am super grateful and thankful for that. Um, last but not least, um, uh, I want to thank um, um, Ms. Brown, Dr. Brown, I'm sorry, not Ms. Brown, Dr. Brown, Lori Matway, and that entire department, um, because, you know, they're providing those parental um, trainings on the weekends. So what they do is not just Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. They're always out in the community asking, what do you need? And then creating something around those requests. Um, and so sometimes persons in the public don't know that. They think that we just go out and we tell the community, here's what we're doing, here's what we're doing. No, it's a really defined process by asking and then creating based around or centered around what's requested and then giving supports in those areas. And so I am really um, grateful um, for that and really thankful for that. Um, and again, as everybody else, Happy New Year. Uh, the kids came back that Tuesday. Um, the parents were ready for the kids to come back and the teachers were probably asking for another day or a week, I'm not sure. But uh, thank you uh, so much for all that uh, we continue to do, everyone continues to do. And um, Ms. Rita Vasquez, you know that January starts my asking the question, where are we, where are we, what students, do I need to call some parents? Um, you know, are we on track? You know, where are we uh, headed? And and that's not to really aggravate and she doesn't take it that way. Um, but really, it's just to try to make sure that if parents say they don't know what's going on with their student, I'm trying to make sure they know what's going on with their student. If they are in distress, if they're not on target and what can we do early to get them on target? Because it's nothing like when all of us get those calls mm -hmm. from a parent who didn't really know what was going on, thought their student was going to graduate and they're not. And then trying to convince them to let that student come back that next semester to make up what they need so they can graduate with a high school diploma. Um, and for the most part, we've been successful in those endeavors um, and getting them to sit for that ACT um, test early in advance so we can um, see where they are. So thank you so very much for allowing me to do that. And um, I will continue to be that bug in your ear. And then um, again, for uh, FAST, um, I will be to Nehemiah, but I'm going to be running late because I also have to do, I've already sent them notice to y'all i do kona leadership every single year and so this year kona is the same night but i'm gonna do kona they're gonna let me go early and then i'll be uh to the nehemiah but i'll be running late so please don't say i'm not there i'll just be running late running in the door um but again um i do appreciate um the fact that we're having just conversations about where we want to do go and working on education together um so i want to thank you all for that um and that is all that is it for me all right very good miss kane well, Happy New Year to all this year, and what an awesome way to begin uh, a new decade, not just a new year, but a new decade this last couple of weeks. And we've had, um, from start to finish in this meeting, just an incredible conversations in all arenas about arts education, which could not be nearer or dearer to my heart and to my passion. I'm excited and proud of our local community for continuing to um, put support behind arts education. This has not always been the case in Pinellas County and in our region. And so I'm really happy to see the conversation continue to turn towards the importance of arts education and what it does for the students overall education, um, scholastically and also personally. Um, I'm also I'm so proud to see so many um, arts teachers also being recognized for their incredible work as finalists in our teacher of the year. Um, there was several arts teachers yeah. in that list. I'm really, really proud of each and every one of them. Um, I know firsthand the hard work that they do every day with their students. And while it can't always be measured in numbers, it can certainly be measured in a student's personal um, satisfaction and in their um, dreams for the future because arts truly has the power to transform a student, inspire them on the deepest level and give them the courage to continue to pursue their dreams or their avenues towards success. These, um, these teachers work tirelessly every day to help their students do that through art, to express themselves. And, um, and not only express themselves, but art is really our connection, our human connection between people. We live in a world of technology and students live in a world where they talk to each other through text. So the arts really is that one medium that's helping them to, to learn how to communicate, to look each other in the face, to have conversations person to person, not just on a screen. Um, and it preserves our culture where we are as a generation. So I'm so excited to see uh, so much emphasis on uh, the future of arts education in our county. 
I've spent a lot of uh, time this last week going over our um, referendum information that we were given. And I'm really, really excited to see we've come a really long way. 14 out of 16 of our high schools have a string program in it of some kind. Um, just about half of our middle schools. Um, and we have about 10 out of roughly 75 elementary schools with a string program of some kind currently. So while it is great success to see that, we also have a long way to go to continue to help our elementary school students expand on those string programs and have, because um, we know that the earlier they start, the, the more effect it's gonna have on their educational process. So I'm really excited about that. Um, this weekend, I'll have the uh, great privilege of going to the Junior Theater Festival, um, which is the largest children's theater festival in the world, sponsored by Disney Musicals and Music Theater International. I'll have the great privilege of watching the premiere of our Junior Broadway series. They will premiere four new productions this year, which all of our theater directors and music directors in our district will then be able to license for our shows and our schools. So when they pick a show, uh, this is the company putting them out. So we'll, I will see this weekend what's, what's new, what's coming up in the next uh, year or two for licensing for them. Um, and every year we see something exciting, I'm pretty sure. Word on the street is Moana Jr. is coming out, so that's kind of exciting. Um, <laughs> uh, this past month, I also got to visit uh, Leelman Elementary and do story time with the students for Christmas. That's always very fun. Um, I did meet with the FAST organization, and um, we are... Uh, I'm uh, in agreement with Ms. Carr that it would be nice to see um, how we are rolling this program out, um, what our initiatives are in the future, and just to have that conversation and workshop. I don't necessarily think a board meeting is the time, but a time where we can ask questions and see um, and see those statistics for ourselves. Um, also, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about our upcoming career uh, pathways, a career in college launch coming the end of this month. I did not name that correctly. Hold on a minute. <laughs> it is the 29th. Um, college and Career Centers launch, excuse me, that we are doing with the Pinellas Education Foundation. Um, college and Career Readiness is also such an important part of um, our initiatives as a board and, and moving forward in our educational process. Um, over the weekend, I posted an article um, read that unfortunately with millennials, only 44% of millennials are cited to be doing as good or better than their parents at the same ages in their careers at 30 post college. So educating this next generation on the importance of career readiness could not be more vital in the coming years as they grow older and they become adults, some of them going off into that. So I'm excited to be a part of the career readiness launch. I'm definitely going to make it to that. Um, and to couple with that, we have a lot of programs already in our schools where we are trying to teach students about um, career opportunities. Um, I visited the Calvin Hunsinger School this past week, and they have a really amazing program as they're trying to teach students about entrepreneurship. It's called Calvin Canine Crunch, and they have created um, a real world experience where students operate their business. They make themselves and also sell dog biscuits. So if you, I'm a strong believer in local commerce. So if you would like to support students, this is a small way that you could support our local students in their business entrepreneurship. It's $4 for a small bag, $7 for a large bag of dog biscuits. They, they, go through the entire entrepreneurial process in creating these. It's a very awesome program. So I encourage everybody to, um, to be great uh, community leaders and support your students when they are trying to learn about business ownership in their local community. Um, with that being said, I just want to thank everybody. Uh, it was a fantastic meeting. And again, thank you to everyone in our community who is continuing their support of education and the arts. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> Um, the King Center will not be having K through two. No, 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 no activity will be going there. That that's not going to be that's not going to happen. And uh, for the for the rest of the staff, I'd like to have everybody have a very nice holiday and uh, a nice holiday. That's right. That's right. We're all welcoming you and. And saying Happy New Year to everyone. Right. So, Happy yep, New Year. Good. Thank you. Um, most of the things have already been covered. The the one thing I would like to add is that we um, that you look online and find out 
when we have performances like the all county chorus, the all county orchestra, the all county band, and attend that. We've talked a lot about the arts, but that's an, an, an opportunity to go and actually see what they're doing and how outstanding the performances are always. You can always count on a really, really wonderful time. So thank you for that. Um, for those of us that are going to Tallahassee, um, session does start today, and we're leaving next Wednesday to go to Tallahassee. Um, some appointments have already been made. Megan um, Fay from the um, Capital Consultants has been working with our um, platform that we presented when we had our breakfast and then when we had our, our legislative meeting. Um, they've been working, which is why some of this stuff is already moving forward, as well as um, Dr. Grego and um, uh, Jennifer Dahl has been working on um, on some of this stuff. And um, so we'll be able to follow up, see where we are, add to, um, to to what's being planned and, you know, suggest some tweaks if necessary. That's probably the best way to put it. But um, we're looking forward to the conversations uh, as well as the consortium has set up several um, meetings. So we will be able to go meet with um, people from all over the state and then go visit our delegation and then pop back in as, as we need to. So um, when we actually get there is when we'll know exactly who the people are and everything else. So we'll, it, we'll kind of get together and um, have that conversation and, and kind of do our plan of attack. Um, I think we've all been given some materials to take with us uh, or, or have I been We've all been given, okay, we've all been given some materials and I want to encourage you to make sure you bring your business cards because they will ask for them. And that's also another way for them to be able to get in touch with us when they have questions. So um, that is probably the end of my report because I think everything else was, was touched on. So with that, if there is nothing else from the board, um, I'm going to ask, are there any requests that were given? Yes, Madam Chair, I recorded one request, and that's to uh, consider possibly a workshop topic to look at our implementation of restorative practices and how it connects to our other initiatives, okay. and to possibly include an implementation level evaluation of it. Yeah, we'll discuss that. At a uh, workshop. Let's let's look at that during our leadership discussion at mm -hmm. the workshop, so that we can identify exactly what is it that we're looking to okay. um, to measure, so that we're not just kind of randomly getting it, and then we say this isn't what we really wanted. Okay, so we can be more specific. Okay. All right, so we'll, we'll do that. And Madam Chair. Yes, ma'am. If we could also at that time just have a, maybe an update on where we are with the team from Kentucky that's supposed to be coming here. Right. If we could just have an update on that about where we are with mm -hmm. that. And if they have dates, I'd like to make myself mm -hmm. available. So if they want to meet and chitter chatter with me or whatever, or attend touring a school or something with them or whatever, I'd just like to try to make myself available. Okay. Thank you, sir. All Thank right. you, ma'am. All right. So I will uh, adjourn the meeting and then we will have an opportunity for people to speak that um, would like to come and talk about the business pertaining to the district that has, was not on the agenda. And then following that, we will do our board evaluation um, as we look at <laughs> as that today. Not looking forward to that one. Okay, so meeting is adjourned and we will move on to those people that would like to address the board on items not on the agenda. Board members and Dr. Grego, we have three speakers today under general public comments. Our first two are Talmadge Andrews oh, and Mike Gandalfo. Mm -hmm. Good morning, uh, Jack. Madam Chair, Dr. Grego. Uh, yesterday, I visited one of the bus compounds and a driver approached me with a problem. And I told her that I will come and address y'all and see, because this is an incident that just doesn't happen every day, but it happens on occasions and it's a very serious uh, problem. Drivers shall not be requested to operate a bus under conditions in which one or more students pose a clear and present danger to the safety of the driver or other students or safety of the bus while in operation. The district school board shall 
have measures in place designed to protect the bus driver from threats or physical injury from students. Also, in case of students having engaged in violent or blatant unsafe actions while riding on the school bus, the district school board shall take corrective measures to ensure the extent to the extent feasible that such actions are not repeated prior to reassigning the student to the, to the bus. Also, drivers will make every reasonable effort to deal with minor infractions of the rules of student conduct. Report of misconduct on school buses. In case of repeated minor misconduct incidents or when serious misconduct incidents occur on a school bus and witnessed by the driver. On January, December 11th or 12th, 2019, between the hours when the school was dismissed between 2.15 and 2.30, a driver of bus 806 Bayside, you need to pull the video and see what I am talking about and what possibly can be done with that incident and other incidents that occur because the drivers are getting stressed out, frustrated, disappointed, and it's, it's not good to be in that mm -hmm. situation when you're trying to transport students safely right. and in an effective manner. The driver loves her job and wants to stay, but that incident Thank you. And if it has not already been brought to your attention, thank you for bringing it. And um, I'm sure that Mr. Herbeck will look into that with the superintendent. Good. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, <clears throat> Madam Chair, board members, Dr. Grego and staff. The ultimate solution to any problem involves a win-win scenario. In our district, the fact that cannot be denied is that the level of stress that we place on educators and students has reached epic proportions. We do not need a data chat or a data wall to notice to be true. Teachers fleeing the profession and the increase in negative behaviors from frustrated students are all the proof anyone needs. We can point the finger at Tallahassee mandates and strategies that sabotage public education, but ultimately these are our students and our employees and we need to accept responsibility for being complacent in the face of harmful directives and policy. Sure, we can show a video at every school board meeting about some success in Pinellas. One such video, I would hope, will be about Richard O. Jacobson Technical High School at Seminole. This is one of the gems of Pinellas County Schools, an educational environment of motivated and engaged students, fantastic administrators, happy and engaged students, uh, excuse me, um, and dedicated educators. I recommend you visit and find ways to replicate its success. This, however, is but an island amidst a sea of stress and despair in our district. We need to find that win-win scenario for our kids. We want to provide a first-class education to every student, regardless of race and zip code. According to our own district's Bridging the Gap plan, we have a long way to go. We have teacher and support vacancies, yet the number of administrative positions increased and minority hiring flatlined. 73% of our black students did not achieve a, a level three on the reading FSA. Minorities, minority students are still disproportionately represented in referrals and out of school suspensions, yet the overall discipline numbers miraculously disappear or decline. Only 46% of black high school students have a passing Algebra one score. Demanding more with less from teachers seems to be the district's only answer to these data points. Regardless of how many ill-prepared students we saddle with the extra pressures of advanced classes or how few referrals we process, a district is not culturally responsive if student performance does not improve. 
We fail these children if they do not leave us prepared to thrive in whatever the next stage in their life brings. Let us teach the whole child. Let's worry about their physical education, their mental education, their health, their social interactions, their dreams and their desires, as well as their academic education. Just because it's not on a test does not mean it's not worth teaching the kids. Let's do right by our kids. If we do that, we will have the support of parents and community. Our success is the, is the success of their children. That would be our win-win scenario. Thank you. Thank you. And our next speaker. Our final speaker today is Mark Clutho. Mark Clutho, Largo. Good afternoon. Energy Unbound. Signed by uh, Amory Lovins at the Energy Conference in 1992 for Mark Clutho, partner in creating America's future. Help lead the retrofit of both the White House and the Pentagon. And more recently, the Empire State Building to cut the utility bill by more than a third. He wrote in Fine Home Building in 1991, if it's not efficient, it's not beautiful. Flowers doesn't know what energy efficiency is. You have imaging specular reflectors facing the wrong direction. This is nothing but lies. Habitat for stupidity. Here you have air conditioning going and you're wearing coats. Air conditioning isn't going at our house. You talk about efficiency, look at the lighting system here. You don't know your efficiency. Why don't you sit down to a formal de debate with me? See what you really know about efficiency. You lie to the taxpayers constantly. Imaging specular reflector going the wrong direction. So what happens? Climate change tests monarchs' ability to adapt. That's what you're going to do, bring the monarchs to extinction. And of course, the teachers, they're crying because they don't have enough money. But you'll spend it on big utility bills. And you lie. Flowers lies and says she knows efficiency. Why are imaging specular reflectors facing the wrong direction? Do you know which way imaging specular reflectors go? They're supposed to be so that you can cut the number of lighting fixtures in half, but you can't do it if you put them in the wrong direction. What a fool, what a cheat. Taxpayers' money up in smoke. You know, my mother told me that sometimes you just don't respond to certain things and certain people. They learn by watching you as an example. So my ending quote for today is, as this new year approaches, Find inspiration all around you and motivation within you to be all that you can be as God would have you to be. Happy New Year. And with that, this meeting is adjourned.